Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a cottage pie. So the first thing we need to do is set the crock pot express to brown saute. So whilst this is coming to brown and saute, I'll introduce you to the ingredients. We have garlic, originally a frozen cube defrosted, Worcester sauce. Thyme and rosemary, dried. Celery, chopped. Milk for the mashed potato. Red and white onion. Salt and pepper. Tomato puree. Chestnut mushrooms, chopped. Now here's a hack I'm going to suggest. This is a frozen vegetable mix, which means all of the vegetables are ready prepared. In the right proportions, you have sweet corn, peas, carrots, and green beans. This is a great addition into a cottage pie where you can add it and it will blend perfectly. This, I believe, is a huge time saver. Minced beef five regular potatoes and one sweet potato. We have the stock. Now the stock is just a stock cube, beef stock cube added to our boiling hot water mix to make our stock. And the oil we're going to be using today is extra virgin olive oil. I believe this is one of the healthier choices and this is what I would suggest. Whilst we're waiting for this to come up to temperature, you can see by the dial, it's already coming up to a reasonably hot temperature. We can add the oil. So a bit of a splash of oil, that's approximately three tablespoons. To start, we want to add our salt and pepper. Now, we want a few different types of equipment that I would usually not use. So for example, we have a casserole dish, and this is going to be how we layer the cottage pie by placing the meat sauce and the mash on top to create a cottage pie. We want a ladle for serving, a spatula for stirring, and for the mashed potato, we want a masher and a bowl. So we can see the crock pot express is now up to temperature, so we can begin adding the ingredients. We want to start by adding our onions, our white and red onions. The white and red onions are going to fry up nicely and we just want to wait for them to be translucent. We have our celery, we can add that as well. And we have herbs. I want to add them next. Next we want to add our garlic. As for the mushrooms, these will fry up a little bit quicker, so we want to wait a moment just for the other ingredients to fry and slightly soften before we add the mushrooms. We now want to add the mints. Now it's going to take a few minutes to cook, so meanwhile I'm going to do some tidying up. Sometimes there is a bit of a challenge with the bowl. If you're trying to stir, the bowl will spin inside the crock pot. What I would suggest is a simple silicon glove or a tea towel to hold the side of the bowl if you wish to stir. This will hold the bowl in place and allow stirring much more easily.
Now the mince is beginning to turn brown, so that should be ready to add the next ingredients shortly. I just want to introduce you to a few things that I find to make life a lot easier and make you able to cook the mash and the potatoes in the same pot at the same time as the mince. So here we have this handy thing and that will prop up a basket. So this is kind of a trivet, something with legs which just allows it to sit further up and effectively then have two cooking levels. We also have a, an actual trivet. Now this is a vegetable steamer, so this will allow you to steam your vegetables or allow you to keep two separate layers, which then means you can then cook your potatoes above the rest at the same time in the same pot with no fuss, no hassle, no mess. This is one of the things that I've found has been absolutely incredible. The fact that you don't have to boil potatoes, you don't have to do any extra work, you don't need any extra pans, and you can cook at the same time without having to tend to anything. It just means that you can make mash at the same time as you can make your mints. So the mince is nicely browned now. We just want to add a few more ingredients. So we have the tomato puree. We then have the Worcester sauce. We want to add the frozen vegetable mix. And last but not least, we have the stock. Now I can see there's a little bit of stock still in the bottom of this, so we just want to give it a bit of a mix before pouring it into the crock pot. And give that a stir. So we now want to wait for this to come to the boil. There are two different sizes, two different forms and two different functions. This will hold a lot more in the Crock Pot Express. So if you find, like I may find, the potatoes are too many for a small basket, then we can drop this straight in, place it straight on top of the meat mixture, and that will allow us to fit more potatoes for more mashed potato. I'm just gonna to try to see if I can fit this in. I'll pour the potatoes. So this here, you can see, is pretty close to the top. Now, if this doesn't fit, we'll take this back out and we'll put the trivet in, which will drop it slightly lower and pour them into the trivet. I prefer this basket because it's got handles and it's a little bit easier to transfer it across once it's cooked. So, as for the cooking process, we want to stop the brown and saute. So, we just want to check the lid, make sure that it's set to lock. So we have open and lock closed. So we want to set this to closed. Hopefully this will fit. Fortunately, that all fits in the smaller basket, which is very good. We now want to set that to manual. Turbo. And 12 minutes. So meanwhile, I'm gonna clean up, get the plates ready, get the glasses sorted, get drinks, get cutlery, and prepare for preparing the cottage pie. Meanwhile, I'd like to introduce you to a side portion of vegetables and how to produce steamed vegetables so that you can have them combined with cottage pie. It's very, very simple. You have your steamer, you have a cup of water, now, I like to pre-boil. 
So you have hot water, which makes it a little bit faster. And we want to add one cup. Or approximately 200 milliliters of water. We add our steamer. Now, the great thing with this is we can more or less add any form of vegetables. I prefer to use frozen vegetables. It's quicker, it's easier, they're readily prepared. I have a few examples. So we have cauliflower, carrots, cabbage, and mixed vegetables. Now you can put any type of frozen vegetable in here and they will cook fantastically well, all the same. So I'm gonna start by pouring a few. So if we go with half a cup. of peas, carrots and sweet corn, a cup of cabbage, a cup of carrots, and a cup of cauliflower, once we've added the hot water or cold water, the only difference it will make is in the time it takes to come to pressure. We want to double check and make sure it's set to closed or lock. And then we want to set it manual two minutes and start. I would also like to mention, in order to time this, to make sure that it comes up to the same time so that you have warm vegetables ready to go at the same time as your main meal, you do need to be mindful that this will take approximately 10 minutes. What I would suggest, is wait for the timing mode to come in on your main meal and that will ensure that you do not overcook your vegetables or that your vegetables aren't ready when you come to serve. Now you do have a bit of leeway if you take the lid off and it's it's cooked they will stay hot for quite a few minutes which will give you a bit of time to serve up your main dish and cook your vegetables and for them to stay hot. So I'm not going to start this just yet. Meanwhile, I can put my veggies back in the freezer. The great thing about having two crock pots side by side, so you can focus on one for the main meal and you can always have a portion of vegetables to have as a side. Now this works very, very often for me and I find that it's fantastic because I can put everything together and I always end up with a great meal as a whole meal rather than just a part of the meal. I then have to cook something separate. I can also ensure with frozen vegetables, there's always vegetables, regardless of whatever I choose, which means that it's great to add a healthy portion to the plate alongside. Now the crock pot turbo has just come up to pressure, so that's begin to, beginning to count down. Meanwhile, I'm gonna begin the vegetables. So in order to do that, as I mentioned before, manual, two minutes, Start. So that's going to begin the heating process and that will steam the vegetables hopefully at the same time as our cottage pie. So we've got about a minute to go. The vegetables are just coming up to pressure now, ready for two minutes on the countdown. So the countdown timer for two minutes has just begun on the crock pot doing the vegetables. And we have 10 seconds left for the cottage pie. Now both of these are going to require an instant pressure release, so I can turn the valve. We can also switch off as we don't need to keep warm function. If you wish to take it up a notch, you can buy frozen parsley, which means it's ready prepared and all you have to do is sprinkle it on 
and it has a fantastic element of flavour, it adds more nutrition and it decorates the dishes incredibly. So the vegetables are now done, all we have to do is release the pressure and we can stop the vegetables as we don't require the keep warm function. If you wish to, we can also use a spatula just to lift the valve. As this crock pot comes up to a higher pressure, it takes longer to depressurize compared to the original crock pot, which maintains at a lower pressure and depressurizes much more quickly. So here we have the potatoes ready to add to the bowl. All they need now is mashing. As mentioned earlier, one carry handle, which makes it a little bit easier. All we have to do now is we have the milk ready, let's mash the potatoes. soften the potatoes and allow them to come to a creamier consistency. So here we have our mashed potato ready to add for our topping. It is possible to lift the bowls out of these and pour them across, like so. So once that's nice and level, we can begin to add the mash. As I was saying earlier, we have the chopped flat leaf parsley. Now we can add this over the top, we can also add this into the mash. Give that a quick stir. The great thing about adding a sweet potato is it gives it a lovely hue, a lovely golden colour. It also adds more nutrition and it gives a slight sweetness to the mash. So now we've added the mash, we just want to spread a nice even layer over the top.
And if you wish to make a nice pattern in the top to give you a traditional finish. So here we have one cottage pie. If you wish to, you can add this to the oven, allow it maybe 15 minutes to crisp, just to brown the top. However, everything is cooked, it's ready to serve as it is. I personally just serve it as it is. We also have our vegetables. What I suggest is if you use a fish slice, something like flat with a sharp blade, it means that you can cut in and serve. So now it's time for the taste test. That's delicious. A little bit of comfort. On a cold day, this is absolutely what you want. The kind of thing that's really, really hearty, really filling, really warm. It's got your country vegetables with your carrots and your peas and your sweet corn. How about that for a perfect dish? On a cold autumn winter day, this is what you want. A little bit of parsley there. Not only is it delicious, not only is it simple, but it has at least five portions of veg, which means you're getting your five a day. It's completely balanced, very simple, very good for you. This is cooking the easy way. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope to see you again. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.